Black. Merhaba arkadaşlar, hepiniz Ayıf Detox webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün Embry-Riddle Havacılık Üniversitesi'nden uzay eğitimleriyle e, eşsiz bir kariyer fırsatını Bobby'den dinliyor olacağız. Lütfen sorularınızı questions kısmından sormayı unutmayın. Yes Bobby, the stage is yours now. All right, thank you so much. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Um, my name is Bobby Brannigan. I'm the Associate Director for International Emissions at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Um, I will be presenting to you today on careers in aviation, aerospace, and beyond. So, um, very nice to meet you all. Thank you again for joining. Um, my email address is on this slide. It will be um, at the very end as well for contact information if you have any questions. And um, again, please you know, put any questions that you have in the chat box. Uh, we will have time for Q&A after this presentation. So, without further ado, um, I will start the presentation. So. Um, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, we have three amazing campuses, um, two in the U.S., and then um, we do have a worldwide online as well as a Singapore campus as well. So Florida, um, where I am based, in Daytona Beach, um, and then we have an Arizona campus as well. So a little overview of what we're going to be going over today. Um, I'm going to show you this short video, and then um, we'll be going over the types of programs that Embry-Riddle has to offer um, in the careers in aviation, aerospace, and beyond. Um, our specific campus information um, and what you can do after graduation as well. So I will begin um, by playing a video for you. So hopefully you can hear it. Hi, Bobby. Yep. Uh, we cannot see the screen. Could you please uh, stop sharing and start again? Okay. All right, is it better now? Uh, is it on the presentation mode? Um, now it is. Okay. You can see it? Yes. Okay, perfect. I do apologize for that. Um, all right, so again, um, this is a slide. Um, here's our campuses, and then uh, we will begin the video. Technology, aviation, business, and cybersecurity. A future defined by innovation. Finding solutions for industry partners as the world's premier aerospace institution. Our continuing success speaks for itself. We've earned top distinctions across our campuses and worldwide. We are training the workforce of tomorrow, adding value to the industries we serve and expanding our growing global reach. We promote problem-based discovery in career-focused programs. We are the leading edge, a global education leader opening up opportunities for students. Our history and heritage spans nearly 100 years, founded with a vision of endless possibilities to launch new generations of pioneers and dreamers putting the future firmly into focus for us and for you. Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. What will you explore with us? All right, so that's a quick little teaser video for you um, about Embry-Riddle. So let's explore some possibilities for your future. So did you know that nearly 66 million jobs are supported worldwide in aviation and related fields? Um, of this, 10.2 million people work directly in aviation industry. So at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, our strength does lie in the field of flight, engineering, business, technology, and space. So there's a lot of options um, for your future. Um, I wanted to start out as well on a positive note. Um, so history does show us how world aviation recovers from crises. So as you can see, we've had a lot of different crises in our past. We're currently going through a pandemic. Um, so oil crisis, Gulf crisis, Asian crisis, 9-11 terrorist attack, um, SARS, world recession. But as you can see, everything always keeps 
climbing. So um, although you know we hit a couple of snags now, um, we're definitely going to continue on our upward trend um, from this pandemic. We're going to come out understanding more. We're going to be able to be more innovative. Um, there's going to be a lot of new jobs that are created because of this. So I just wanted to let you know. Um, you know, don't worry about how the world of aviation is going to be or is right now because it's going to just continue to get better. Um, our mission is your success at Embry Riddle. So, just um, some of our notable things uh, we do have the top five online bachelor programs um, ranked in uh, the past seven years. Number one, aerospace engineering. We have the first and only aerospace uh, physiology program in the nation, um, first college of security and intelligence in the nation. And then, another quick fact that's really cool seven of our alum have actually become astronauts with NASA, which is pretty cool. Um, worldwide online, we do have our um, worldwide online campus, like I said. Um, we were ranked the best online programs, US News and World Report in uh, 2020, as well as 2021 already. Um, and we're the best online um, programs for veterans as well. So in terms of aviation and business, um, employment categories and supported air transportation are expected to grow by 25% through 2022. Um, this is from the Boeing Company's Pilot and Technician Outlook um, between 2019 and 2038. So they project the 804,000 uh, new civil aviation pilots, 769,000 new maintenance technicians, and 914,000 new cabin crew will be needed to fly and maintain the world fleet over the next 20 years. So thinking about um, aviation and careers in aviation, you just need to think about um, just because we're in a pandemic doesn't mean that the um, airplanes do not need to be serviced. Doesn't need it doesn't you know mean that um, airplanes don't need to be created and. Um, you know, all these jobs are still going behind the scenes. Um, you know, although maybe people are not specifically traveling, um, they do still have to be maintained and they have to be, um, you know, created and all that stuff. So just making sure um, that you understand that um, there are other jobs um, than just being a pilot as well in the aviation related field. So um, in terms of aviation and business, as you can see, these are uh, degree programs that we do offer. Um, we do bachelor degree, which is a four year undergraduate degree um, right out of high school. Master's degree comes after the bachelor degree, and then we have doctorate as well. So um, aeronautical science, that is our flight program. That is our number one popular program. Um, capacity um, gets reached very, very quickly. So if you're interested in applying for our professional pilot program, um, you can apply to either one of our campuses here in the United States at Prescott, Arizona, or Daytona Beach, Florida. Um, if you're interested in fixed wing, um, so which is airplanes, you can do either campus. If you're interested in rotary, uh, which is our um, helicopter training, which is pretty cool, um, you can only do that in Prescott, Arizona as well. Um, but like you see, you know, we have aviation business administration, um, business administration, business analytics, um, leadership, logistics and supply chain management as well. So we do have those business sectors um, in the business. So engineering and space, and we are the nation's largest educator of aerospace engineers. Uh, we have real world research that could take you anywhere in the world um, while at Embry-Riddle. And then we, a new generation of space professionals is needed um, as all aspects of the space industry undergo astronomical changes, such as space tourism, um, commercial space companies grow, um, and exploration continues. So if you've been following SpaceX, um, you know, they are just launching rockets like crazy right now, um, you know, trying to get up to the moon, to the Mars, or to Mars, um, you know, and to other parts of our solar system as well um, and beyond. So uh, we definitely have the labs and facilities um, on our campuses to be able to train you um, in order to um, continue on to do those types of jobs as well. So as you can see in bachelor degree, um, we have aerospace engineering, astronomy, and astrophysics, civil engineering, computer, electrical, engineering physics. So we have a lot of different types of engineering um, and space exploration. Uh, we have master's degrees and doctorates as well. What's really cool about our master's degrees and bachelor degrees in the engineering field is that we offer um, what's called an accelerated master's degree. So usually it takes four years to do a bachelor degree, two years for a master. But if you do the accelerated master's degree, um, it will only take you five years because in your last year of your bachelor degree, you're going to begin your master's. So if you're interested in combining those, um, you know, getting that out of the way in just five years, um, you know, you're able to do that with Embry Riddle as well. All right, so in terms of safety, security, and intelligence, um, individuals and corporations um, and governments are interested in the protection against cyber threats, natural disasters, occupational illness and injuries, and also criminal acts as well. So this is actually one of the fastest growing career paths in the world. Um, highly trained safety, security, and intelligence professionals are increasingly sought by businesses, governments, and the military as well. 
So we have all different types of labs and facilities, like I said, on our campus. Um, one really cool one is the ethical hacking lab, um, where you will learn, um, you'll kind of be pinned against each other. So there's gonna be two groups. And then uh, one of you is trying to detect a threat um, and solve it. And then the other one is actually trying to break into um, you know, some sort of software system, whatever that may be. So you're just kind of like trying to look for the flaws, um, but some of them are real world situations. You're actually helping um, you know, these different sectors in trying to figure out what is going on with their specific um, business. So the bachelor degree, um, we have aerospace and occupational safety, cyber intelligence and security, global conflict studies, homeland security, safety management. By the way, all these programs are open to international students. There's nothing that you are not able to study at Embry-Riddle. Um, just because you're an international student. So you don't need security clearance for any of our programs, um, except for the unmanned aircraft system science um, at the Daytona Beach campus. That's the one program that international students, just because um, you need the clearance for that specific program, it has a military component to it. Um, however, that same program is open in uh, Prescott, Arizona, if you're interested in the unmanned aircraft system science, um, and you're able to take that there as well. So we do have up to master's degrees, emergency services, information security and assurance, safety science, security and intelligence studies as well. So moving on to applied science, um, at the core of applied sciences um, and math is research. So weather patterns, human behavior, technology, aerospace, global security, all of these things. Um, whatever your focus, there's a research component that involves solving real world challenges. So at our um, institution, and I'll go over this a little bit later in the presentation, um, class sizes are very small, but you're not just going to be sitting in a classroom learning um, from a lecture. So you're going to be um, getting this practical knowledge. Um, you're gonna be using your hands, you're gonna be in our labs and facilities. You're gonna be learning, um, you know, literally like in the moment. So um, it's never boring at all. So in terms of applied sciences, we have aerospace physiology, which actually has a pre-med um, component to it as well. Um, applied meteorology, biology, computer science, forensic biology, forensic psychology, human factors, um, meteorology, simulation science games and animation. So if you're interested in um, video games, uh, definitely you're able to study um, how to create video games, um, how to create all those different types of components. You get to play video games um, in class, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so you design it and then you know take it up to um, when you are able to watch it as well. So um, that's basically the different types of programs that we offer in those fields. Um, in terms of our two beautiful residential campuses, just letting you know, um, you know, like I said, Daytona Beach, Florida, and Prescott, Arizona. So that's where we're located in the United States. Um, the I'll go over specifics about each uh, campus in the next slides. Um, and then for those students that are seeking to perfect their English communication skills, we do have the Embry-Riddle Language Institute um, on both of our campuses. So you're able to study um, English. Um, you should have a basic understanding before um, you're able to begin in that program. However, um, you know, you pretty much could be like at a level two um, for English, maybe just know the basics, um, and then we'll be able to teach you all the way up through to be fluent. Um, so we're doing pretty good on time. I'm going to show you um, this video about Daytona Beach campus um, so you get a little bit more of an understanding of what life is like um, on our campus.
All right, so that was a really cool video about our specific Daytona Beach campus. We do have another one for the Prescott, Arizona campus as well. Um, but just some quick facts about our Daytona Beach campus. Um, we have about 6,000 undergraduate students, about 629 graduate students. Um, we represent over 107 different countries, so we are very diverse on our campus. Um, and we are about 17% total international. That number has actually went up, so now we're closer to about 20% international. Um, so we are located about five minutes from the beach. Um, we're located adjacent to the Daytona Beach International Airport. Um, and if you're interested in NASCAR, um, we do have the NASCAR, the um, Daytona Beach International Speedway. Um, that's right next to our campus as well. So um, just the other day, I was on campus um, and I was able to hear the cars um, you know, racing, which is pretty cool. So in terms of our Prescott campus, um, it's a little bit um, of a different temperature um, and a little bit of a different climate. So um, both campuses have over 300 days of sunshine a year. Um, in Daytona Beach, we're a little bit more tropical. Um, obviously, we're um, in Florida, so we're right next to the ocean. Um, in Prescott, they're more of a mountain community. So I'll let you um, see the video, and then I'll give you a little bit more information about our Prescott campus. All right, so that was just a short overview of our Prescott, Arizona campus um, as well. So they're a little bit smaller than Daytona Beach. They have about 3,000 undergraduate students, um, around 50 graduate students. They represent 40, over 41 countries. Um, and also their international population went up a little bit um, even during the coronavirus. So um, international population is about 9% now as well. So like I said, they're located um, in a mountains community, located a mile high in the Bradshaw Mountains. Um, there's definitely a lot of things to do outside. Um, it actually just snowed there <laughs> last week. Um, so they had you know a couple of snow days um, because there was so much snow and ice. So um, you get to experience all four seasons. Um, while you know here in Florida, um, you probably get two seasons. Um, we have hot and even hotter. <laughs> um, but no, during um, you know winter this year, it did get a little bit chilly. Um, so you will experience those temperature drops as well. So. Um, so that's about our two campuses um, in the U.S. So we do have, like I said, our Ember Riddle Singapore campus in Asia. Um, so if you don't want to go too far, um, you know, you're able to study at Singapore as well. So um, there is a, it's a little bit different um, because at that campus, there's only a few programs that are available. So they offer part-time programs for working professionals looking to learn more um, on a particular subject and also for those hoping to get a promotion or start a new career path. Um, Full-time programs are offered for younger students with no work experience as well. So as you can see, there's only a few um, degree programs that they do offer there, um, you know, in terms of undergraduate, graduate, and PhD as well. All right, so some fast facts about Embry-Riddle. 94% um, of our surveyed graduates are employed or are continuing education within one year of graduation. So what that means is that your return on investment, the money that you're putting in, the time, the energy, um, you know, that you put into your education at Embry-Riddle, um, you're pretty much going to get it back. Um, so we do have partnerships all over. 
um, and I'll show you a lot of the different organizations um, that our students have gone to, on to work for um, and some of the organizations that our students have actually created. Um, so they, um, we have an incubation center, so we do a lot of research. Um, so we have a facility that allows our students to be able to do a startup organization um, company. And then once it gets um, too big, then you know, they can move on to a permanent space as well. Um, we do have over 137,000 Embry-Riddle alumni around the world. So um, all these alums have graduated from Embry-Riddle. Um, they've been in your spot where you are right now and then come um, you know, to do their degree program and then they move on to bigger and better things. So um, we do have an extensive alumni network. What that means for you is that um, you know, they come back to Embry-Riddle and they're looking for fellow Embry-Riddle students um, to come and work for them, work in their organization. Some of them are CEOs, they look in HR, they, um, our top engineers, whatever it may be, um, they work for such places as like CIA, NASA, those types of places too. So um, there's definitely a lot of opportunities um, in terms of while you're studying um, through internships and research opportunities, and then um, after you graduate. So um, some of the ever real um, employment outcomes, uh, like I kind of said a couple of them, but there's a lot of um, airlines as well. So JetBlue, um, Delta, American Airlines, Bombardier, um, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Siemens, um, Rockwell Collins, those types of places as well. NASA, as you can see, the Army, Navy, Marines, um, Aloha Airlines too. So it's pretty cool um, to see you know, where our students end up um, you know, after graduation. So preparing for success. So in terms of student employment, um, students can work up to 20 hours per week uh, during the school year and up to 40 hours per week doing, during uh, school breaks, but that's on campus. So as an international student on your F1 visa, you're not allowed to work off campus unless it is through something called curricular practical training, like I'll go over with you, um, you know, through an internship opportunity or research opportunity. So some sample jobs, you could be a lab tech, IT support, scheduler on the flight line, a tour guide, admissions uh, support. Um, you could also be a certified flight instructor as well. So in terms of campus life and student activities, um, we are NCAA Division II ranked. So we do have collegiate um, level competitive uh, athletics, so you are eligible for an athletic scholarship as well. So um, you have to be recruited by one of our coaches um, for one of our uh, sports teams. So as you can see, we have women's and men's athletic teams, baseball, basketball, cross country, golf, lacrosse, soccer, um, rowing, track and field, volleyball, and then we do have a co-ed cheerleading as well. Um, in terms of Prescott, they are part of um, something that's like the NCAA, um, it's NAIA, so they are allowed to um, provide sports scholarships as well. Um, but we have golf, baseball, basketball, so pretty much the same. Um, and they do also have wrestling, we do not have wrestling um, at Daytona Beach either. In terms of clubs and organizations, um, pretty much if you're interested in anything, we have something for you. Um, so you can do something in campus service, um, cultural, if you're into Greek life, so sororities and fraternities, um, recreational, so we have Camping and Outdoors Club, um, Eagle Talon Martial Arts Society, which is pretty cool. We have professional um, clubs and organizations, military, special interest as well, um, a skydiving club. Who would not want to be part of a skydiving club, right? <laughs> so um, sometimes they do go and compete. They win prizes, um, those types of things as well, So which is pretty cool. Um, same thing in Prescott, Arizona, um, hang gliding club, helicopter club, um, Future Business Leaders of America, Society of Women Engineers. So, uh, like I said, pretty much anything. We have over 200 different clubs and organizations. If you're interested in something and we somehow do not have it, um, it could be, say, Quidditch, um, if you're into Harry Potter, um, which we do have Quidditch teams. But, um, you know, if it's something like that and you see that we do not have that for you, um, you have the option to create your own club. All you need is one other student. Um, and then, you know, we do have a whole entire department that is devoted to um, student life, so clubs and organizations are part of that, um, and they can help you out with that. Okay, so preparing for success in terms of practical training. So curricular practical training, or CPT, that is uh, directly related to your major field of study. It happens while you are completing your degree program, and then you do receive credit for it as well. So it could be like an internship. Um, say that you do it over the summer, or you do it over an entire semester, so the fall semester. Um, say that you go and work for Delta. Um, you know, so you can you're able to do that on your student visa, and you're able to um, you know, get credit for it as well. So um, optional practical training, or OPT, this um, happens after you graduate. Authorization does come from the government. Um, it takes three to five months, so um, you will you know, we'll work with you um, at that point in time. 
Um, so you're able to begin that process as well. So must be recommended by the classification of the program um, that you're in. So if you're in an engineering program, um, you might not be able to do something in business or you know whatever that may be. Um, so it has to do with uh, what you're studying. Um, standard OBT is 12 months. So you're able to stay in the US, work for an organization um, in the US on your student visa for 12 months um, after you graduate. However, um, STEM programs, the science, technology, engineering, and math, which is almost all of our programs, that allows you um, to do an extension of an additional 24 months. So you can stay in the US for a total of three years, um, potentially, uh, if you are approved for that, um, and work on your student visa, which is pretty cool. All right, so in terms of our tuition, um, how much does it cost, right? So um, undergraduate estimated costs is around 52,000 US dollars per academic year. So flight students are gonna have to add an additional 15 to $25,000 um, each year that you're progressing through flight. Um, so the undergraduate estimated cost, that's for um, each year for a total of four years, uh, but it includes, like I said, tuition and fees, room and board, uh, which is your on-campus housing and your meal plan, um, and then your estimate for books as well. Um, if you're interested in graduate programs, um, it's around 33,700 US dollars. What's really cool about um, graduate programs, and I'll talk about it in the scholarship section, um, is we have assistantships that can help you out with your tuition as well. So worldwide online is a little bit more affordable. Um, you don't have to travel to the US. You still get the same great education. Um, it's not as hands-on, um, just because it is from a computer. Um, it's currently what we're doing, we're in a hybrid model. Um, so if students are not able to travel physically to the US, um, we're able to still host them uh, for online or distance learning. Um, but it's still with our you know, award winning faculty, our great programs, um, and you still learn a lot as well. So um, for undergraduate, it's around 11,500 US dollars per year. And then for graduate, it's around 9,700. So in terms of scholarships, um, for first time incoming uh, university students uh, straight out of high school, um, you are eligible for merit-based scholarships, and these are partial. Um, so the scholarships range from like 2,000 US dollars up to 12,000 US dollars, um, and that's based on your high school GPA and then your SAT or ACT test scores. So think about taking those tests. Um, we're trying to move away from a model where you are required to, um, but obviously during COVID, you know, if you tried to take the SAT, um, and it kept getting canceled, you know, we can definitely work with you um, to still potentially um, find a scholarship opportunity for you. Um, we also do sometimes have the, um, depending on the donors, we have the Women of Excellence Award. So just because you're a female, um, as long as you have a GPA of at least 3.0 uh, from high school, um, then you're eligible for that scholarship as well, which is pretty cool. In terms of the assistantship for graduate students, um, this would be, you would be working for an organization um, on campus, so it could be a department, um, and then you're able to receive a stipend or, you know, a tuition waiver um, for your tuition, so it could be free for you to attend classes um, with us, uh, but then, you know, you would have to pay for your um, personal stuff, so like all your housing and meal plan and stuff like that. Um, this happens after you come to campus, so um, you would apply. Um, and then you would be admitted to campus, begin your degree program, and then you would work with our career services team, and they would let you know which assistantships are available. Um, then you would apply for those, go through the interview process, and then you know, kind of talk to them. So in terms of our checklist um, for the undergraduate, we would need an application to be completed online. We do not use the Common App. Um, so basically, you just go to our website, apply. Uh, we'll be able to waive the $50 application fee because you came to this webinar. Um, just send us an email uh, when you're ready to apply, and we'll let you know how to do that. Um, basically, we need your high school um, transcripts and or any college transcripts um, that you uh, attended. So official TOEFL or IELTS score or Duolingo, we um, have now um, added Duolingo on our approved um, language proficiency scores. So um, SAT and ACT scores are optional. Um, the foreign credential evaluation comes in um, if your transcripts uh, require them. So many times we're able to um, evaluate your high school transcripts in-house. Um, any university or college transcripts from outside of the U.S. need to be submitted for the foreign credential evaluation process. Um, and again, if you have any other questions about that, you know, definitely email us um, or that information is on our website as well. Um, we can walk you through it. We don't um, require recommendation letters or a personal statement. However, um, it is always nice to have. So as a supplement to your application, so you can definitely submit those as well. 
And then um, you need to approve funding for at least one year of study um, to receive your I-20 document from us, which shows your degree program, where you're going to be studying and the length of your program um, for your student visa appointment. So that will come after you are admitted. Um, we'll need you to approve funding for at least one year, and then we'll need a copy of your passport as well. Same thing with graduate, except everything is required. Um, so we will, again, waive that $50 application fee, but we need your statement of objectives, all official college transcripts. Um, some of our programs require the GRE or the GMAT, um, so those standardized tests could potentially be required. Uh, we need your language proficiency scores. Uh, we need a resume, um, three recommendation letters, so two academic and one professional um, as well. And then basically, yeah, you're clear for takeoff. So become familiar with academic trends and employment options in your country. Um, explore beyond the obvious career path. So, you know, the doctor, lawyer, um, teacher type thing. Um, just kind of think outside of the box and see what is going on um, in terms of a career. Um, because everything is a little bit different. Like I said, um, there's going to be a lot of um, jobs and careers that are going to be um, created out of this pandemic. So just, you know, think about that. Consider the school's on-campus resources, including aircraft simulators and other labs. Uh, find and read books that are about areas that interest you. Know before you go and keep an open mind and explore your options for studying abroad. So although you came to the U.S. to study abroad, um, you are still able to take advantage of one of those programs, say go to Europe, South America, whatever it may be, um, and you're able to go there for a semester um, or for a spring break, whatever that may be, um, and study you know, at our one of our partner institutions. Um, as well, which is pretty cool. Um, so you know where you're going, we'll help you get there. You can fly an airplane, design an engine, lead an industry, predict the weather, and explore outer space. Um, you definitely, the possibilities are endless, pretty much. So um, these are our campus contact information. Um, so please, you know, jot them down. Um, I will be going into the questions here um, in just a minute. Um, but yeah, depending on where you're interested in going, um, you can definitely reach out to any one of our campuses, Florida campus, Arizona, Worldwide Online, or our Singapore in Asia as well. So um, that will be pretty much all of that. All right, so um, I will, I did yep, leave time. Um, we have about 10 minutes um, for Q&A. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and then we will go through the question and answers. Perfect. All right. So we have a lot of good questions in here. Um, let's see. All right. Again, hello, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So what is the minimum GPA requirement for engineering bachelor degree? Is it the same for all of them? Thank you. So um, I will start a live here. Um, so yes, uh, the minimum GPA for engineering programs is around a 3.5. Ish, <laughs> um, we you know we prefer a B average for any of our engineering programs. Um, you know, to get you best um, prepared for it is try to do those um, higher level like math and science courses. Um, you know, do the physics, do the calculus. Um, you know, whatever you're able to do, um, and make sure that you know you you do well in it. So um, you know, it's around a three point five, I would say, um, for our aer aerospace engineering program. The other ones you might be able to get away with like a three point two on a four point zero. Um, anything like that as well. All right, do we need to have special equipment for a flight course? Um, I'll, that's a great question as well. So not necessarily, um, it just kind of depends. Um, however, you know, the special equipment is going to be the cockpit of the airplane that you're in, right? So uh, we do have all the aircraft simulators on campus. Um, you know, we have all of our fleet. We have over 100 different instructional aircraft uh, that you'll be learning on. So. Um, the flight team will let you know uh, what specific things that you may need um, in terms of like a logbook and, um, you know, maybe some sort of, I don't know, anything, you know, that they, they say that you need. Um, I don't know of anything specifically um, that they are not going to be providing to you. Um, however, you know, there, there could be some stuff, um, you know, that they'll let you know uh, that you need. So as of right now, no. Um, but... Like I said, you know, they'll let you know that. Um, all right, so what is the ratio of finding a job after a finished master program? So that's a good question as well. Um, it just kind of depends on what you do during your master's program. Um, it kind of depends on what you do during your bachelor program as well. So this could be for both um, undergraduate and graduate programs. Um, it just kind of, you know, what you do on campus during your time here um, will define what you're able to do afterwards, right? So if you are not engaged, if you are not going to our career fairs um, and career expos, 
Um, you know, if you're not reaching out to potential employers, um, you know, if you have to try to reach out to some of our alums, then, you know, you might not be as successful um, in achieving, you know, finding a job. Um, it just kind of depends, you know, if you want to go straight back to your country, that's why I said no before you go, kind of like study up on the trends of your career paths, um, because, you know, ultimately you want to bring back um, whatever you learned to your home country, you're able to, um, you know, work for an organization there, um, just kind of help out um, that way. So just kind of doing a lot of the research, um, but the 94% is for all of our programs. So graduate, um, undergraduate, you know, doctoral as well. So, um, you know, if 94% of our students are able to find a job after graduation, then, you know, they did something right. Um, and we're able to assist with that as well. So we do have, like I said, a career services um, department that helps um, you know, with potential employers. And a lot of these employers are just looking for Embry-Riddle students, so, which is pretty good for you. Um, you know, the name definitely holds a little bit of weight um, in the aerospace and engineering fields, as well as aviation um, you know, and our business flight, our business program. Hi, Bobby. By the way, we can expand your uh, time, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, so you can take your time with the answering questions. Okay, perfect. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Um, so how can I get a scholarship? So, um, you know, I kind of went over all the scholarship information. I'm sure that that question was in there um, before I went over that slide. But yeah, like I said, for undergraduate, um, you know, we need your SAT or ACT and then your high school GPA. And then in terms of graduate programs, we do offer those assistantships. Um, sometimes we do offer small um, scholarships for maybe the GRE or the GMAT, um, but those are not required for a lot of our programs either. So it just kind of depends. Um, but we can um, provide more information on scholarships, um, what you potentially are eligible for, um, you know, further, um, you know, like if you reach out to us, well, we can send you some information. Um, do we have job opportunities while you're studying the master program? So yes, um, you do have um, job opportunities while you're studying. Um, like I said, you know, there's internships and co-ops that you're able to pursue, um, you know, and those types of things as well. So it just kind of depends on, again, what you do during your degree program. Um, but you are able to study through that curricular practical training while you are in your um, degree program and then optional practical training uh, for after you graduate as well. All right, how often um, can we expect to get training? So um, I will answer this one as well. So um, it just kind of depends on what training you're thinking of. So if it's flight training, um, you know, that's part of your program. It's gonna be a three year thing. So you're gonna be learning, you know, almost every day. Um, you're going to get a specific flight block, so you'll have simulator sessions, you'll have ground school, um, and then you'll be able to take the planes up um, as well. In terms of our other programs, um, like I said, it's going to be very practical knowledge. It's not just going to be theoretical, so you're not just going to sit in a classroom. Um, you're going to be utilizing all of our labs and facilities that are available to you. Um, so you can expect to be you know, pretty hands-on um, the entire time that you're at Embryville. There's going to be some of those classes, yes, that you need to you know, sit down and um, learn but from a book, but mostly um, most of our programs do have some sort of a lab component to them. Um, so, you know, you could be learning in an airplane hangar, you know, so um, it's pretty cool, um, you know, where our classrooms are located and how uh, we teach. All right, um, this is a good question as well. Is aviation uh, bachelor degree program duration four years? Yes, so um, you have to do the academics um, blended with the flight program. So flight takes three of those four years. So basically your first year, your first couple of semesters are gonna be doing um, general education requirements and then you'll be able to secure your flight block, um, start your ground school and all that stuff. So that's gonna take you, you know, about three years to complete from private pilot license all the way up through um, to your commercial um, and your multi-engine and those um, instrument ratings as well. All right, do we offer short-term pilot programs? If yes, um, please inform about the duration of studies. So the only way that you're able to pursue flight is through the four-year bachelor degree of um, aeronautical science. So we unfortunately are not able to just have students come to our campus and learn flight. They must be enrolled in a full-time academic program um, and everything is blended together. So. That. All right, do we have any co-ops um, or internships available? So yes, we do. 
Um, a lot of organizations have these that are located um, on our career services website, um, which is pretty cool. Um, but we do have all these potential employers that provide us with this information. We have our career expo every fall and every spring um, where these over 100 different employers come to Embry-Riddle to meet with our students, sometimes do interviews on the spot. Um, you know, they have internship opportunities, co-ops, um, you know, off campus. We also have them on campus as well. So if you wanted to be a research assistant, working in a lab, working in a college, whatever that may be, um, you definitely are able to do that. Um, are there many work opportunities um, on campus for international students? Yes, there are. So, um, you know, you can work in admissions. We have um, three international students that work for us here in international admissions, um, but we also have many different other departments on campus. So as an international student, like I said, you're able to work up to 20 hours per week while school is in session. Um, and so you're able to work, you know, for a department. You can work as a tour guide. We have many international students that are tour guides. They work in the phone room. Um, as well, so when you call um, the admissions number, you know, somebody will be able to pick up and answer. They do live chats, those types of things. Um, you could work in a lab. You could work um, at a radio station, which is pretty cool. You could work in campus safety, um, you know, with the parking enforcement. Um, you can work on the flight line. You can work in the air traffic control tower. So there's definitely plenty of places where you're able to work um, on campus. All right, do we offer housing on campus? Yes, we do. So as an international student, you are, um, and actually as any student, um, you're required to live on campus for your first two years um, if you're a first time incoming student. So you're um, not required to live on campus if you are over the age of 21. Um, if you have over 60 um, credit hours that you've completed at a different university. Um, so there's ways that you're able to wait out of the housing requirement. However, um, we do offer a lot of housing on campus. We're actually completing our third phase of our new residence hall right now. Um, so that should be opening uh, this August. Um, but we have two others that were just built last year and the year before. So um, we are always expanding our housing options for our international students um, and domestic students as well. Um, but yep, there are going to be, um, there's housing available for you. All right. Um, do the programs include internship? I don't know if Amster is a specific program, um, but we do have programs um, that do include internships. Um, some of them are required. So, um, you know, we do have partners, you know, with a lot of airlines, with a lot of organizations in the aerospace in um, industry as well. So um, it's kind of like blended in um, to the program, um, to the academics. So uh, you'll be able to work, you know, in that internship for that organization um, during your program. So yeah, there are a lot of internship opportunities. Um, you know, some do specifically have an internship component to it, um, but you, you're you eligible for internships any other time as well. All right, so yep, this is a really good question as well. Um, do international students build their career in the USA or their own country after graduating generally? It, literally all depends. So if you wanted to stay in the U.S. and work on your um, that OPT, that optional practical training, you're able to. Um, if you are if you want to return to your home country right after graduation, you're able to do that as well. So um, we've kind of seen a split. It just kind of depends on the opportunities. Um, a lot of students will go back to their home countries because maybe they already have something lined up, um, you know, from when you know, they first wanted to come um, and study. So it just kind of depends. Um, that's why you need to, again, study the trends in your home country, study the trends here in the USA, um, do your research on these organizations. Um, you'll have plenty of time um, while you're here to do this research, to meet with these organizations. Um, you know, whether, so say that you, you, know, you work for, um, I don't know, Delta. Um, maybe you, you're not a pilot for them, but you could be anything else, right? And so you could work for them, um, but say that they have uh, an office somewhere in Europe or somewhere in Asia. Um, you're able to go and work for that office, um, you know, in that location. You don't necessarily have to stay in the United States. So it just kind of depends, um, you know, what the international student, um, you know, what their career path would be, what they want to do. Um, so, yeah, generally I would say just, you know, you'll, you'll figure that out while you're here. Um, but a lot of students do um, return to their home countries uh, because they want to bring back that wealth of knowledge. Um, they want to help out um, as well. So, 
Um, all right, which programs are the most popular for international students who would like to do a career in the USA? So I would say any of our programs. Um, our business programs are great. Our engineering programs are great in our aerospace field. So um, our flight pilot program is good. Um, you will graduate with around 250 hours of flight. Um, what's cool though is that the restricted ATP, um, so your air traffic um, pilot license is going to be, um, you're required to get at least a thousand flight hours um, at Embry-Riddle in order to become a professional pilot. So um, at one of those airlines, although some of our international students have secured jobs at a regional airline um, with less hours than that. However, um, the industry standard is 1500 flight hours and Embry-Riddle because we have, uh, we're mandated by the FAA. Um, you just need 500 less flight hours, which is pretty cool. Um, but other than that, I mean, you could be an aerospace engineer, you know, for Boeing um, here in the U.S. Um, so it just kind of depends. You know, you could go into business. You could go into um, forensic accounting and fraud examination, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, there's many, many different options for you. Um, a lot of our students go to, like, EA Sports um, for the simulation science, um, our management programs, uh, those types of things as well. So... All right, we have a couple more. Um, how to apply for citizenship after completing a master program? Is there such an opportunity? Yes, there's always an opportunity to apply um, for permanent residency, um, your green card, um, your U.S. citizenship. So um, you'll have to go through the U.S. government website, um, the State Department, So and they'll kind of outline all of that as well. So I'm um, just letting you know it's not instant. Um, so sometimes, you know, it could take up to seven years. Um, but it just kind of depends. So uh, there is um, availability to be able to do that. Um, a lot of our students do. Um, you just have to you know, know what you're doing um, and do a lot of research previously as well. All right, is ACT or SAT required for university? Um, no, it is not. Um, it's never required for admission. However, like I said, it is required for those undergraduate um, partial merit-based scholarships. All right, what master's programs would you recommend to a junior air traffic control student? Um, thank you in advance. So in terms of the master's programs, I mean, we have master's in aeronautics. Um, we have, um, I mean, you could almost go into anything really. Uh, you could go into aviation business administration. Um, you know, we, we do have a plethora of programs, so you can always go to our website and kind of look to see um, the specific programs that we have. Um, you know, whether you wanted to come to study in the U.S. or if you wanted to do a worldwide online as well. Um, we have a lot of those programs that are available. We have aeronautics. Um, that's a really good program, um, too. So it's pretty much like the flight program. However, it doesn't um, have that flight component to it. Um, so you'll just, you know, kind of learn specifics about that industry. All right. And then how many U.S. universities have aeronautical courses? Which ones are accepted? Um, as more better when you go to finding a job. So again, this is completely up to you um, and how you, with any um, institution, it's completely up to what you do with your time while you're there. Um, so there's a lot of universities in the U.S. that have aeronautical courses. Again, it just kind of depends on where you want to go um, with that as well. So you can find all the rankings, um, you know, on the U.S. News and World Report um, if you just, you know, do a quick internet search for that. Um, and then, you know, you can search for aeronautical courses. You're gonna find, you know, a whole list of institutions. So you just wanna make sure that you are choosing an institution that's right for you. So just because it's highly ranked in some of its programs may not be the best fit for you. Um, you know, maybe they don't have a lot of the resources on campus. They don't have the labs and facilities. You're gonna be sitting in a classroom just kind of theoretically learning from a book or a boring lecture. Um, you know, and you're not going to get that practical knowledge. So I would just, you know, again, do your research, try to figure out uh, who has the best resources for you, um, location, um, you know, on campus, um, housing and those types of things as well. Um, just kind of thinking about that. Um, but all everything like that, um, you know, the return on investment, how much it costs um, and, you know, the amount of students that graduate and find jobs after graduation. Um, all that information is public knowledge usually, so you can kind of, you know, learn about that. See who is able to provide you with, you know, better scholarship opportunities or, you know, see where their faculty uh, have come from because a lot of our faculty and a lot of the other faculty that I've seen at other institutions, um, you know, they do have that real world knowledge. So you don't want somebody that just came out of college and then now they're trying to teach you, you know, engineering. 
Uh, meanwhile, you know, a lot of our faculty have actually worked for, you know, Boeing and Siemens and um, Bombardier as engineers, um, you know, and now they come back because they want to continue um, with their legacy as well. So it just kind of depends, um, you know, which institutions you're interested in um, geographically, where you want to be. Do you want to be in the north, the south? Um, you know, do you like a hot, cold? Um, you know, do you want to be by a mountain? Do you want to be by a desert? Um, it just kind of depends. So that, that's the great thing about the U.S. We have over 4,000 institutions here. Um, so you definitely have options everywhere. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, if anybody has any other specific questions, please, you know, definitely put them in here. Um, otherwise, yeah, Zainab, are we going to talk? Hi, uh, could you please share an email address for the participants that wants to direct yeah. contact? Yep. All right, so that is my um, specific email address. Um, if for some reason you can't get a hold of me, all right, that's our international admissions email address. That um, inbox is actually monitored by uh, about well, our three student assistants. Uh, one of them is a grad assistant, and then myself and my director, Tara Good. Um, so if you reach out to specifically international.admissions at erau.edu, one of us will get back to you. Um, usually within 24 hours, we're, we're pretty quick to um, see the emails. Yes, thank you very much, Bobby, for your presentation and putting a real effort answering all of the questions. We believe it was a really informative webinar for the attendees. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. And thank you, everyone, again, for joining um, and learning about Embry-Riddle. Uh, please reach out. Feel free. Um, I would love to have you apply. Um, like I said, we'll waive your application fee of the $50, and then you know, we'll go from there. We'll be able to help you out with the entire admissions process. Yes. Also, I would like to thank the participants in Turkish as well. Katıldığınız için teşekkür ederiz arkadaşlar. Embry-Riddle Havacılık Üniversitesi ile ilgili diğer sorularınız için Bobby'nin paylaşmış olduğu mail adreslerinden iletişime geçebilirsiniz. Yarınki webinarlarımızda görüşmek üzere. Thank you again, Bobby. It was a pleasure to have you in IFT Talks. Thank you. Everyone have a great night. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right,